Hey, Greg. Hello. Uh, thanks for coming back here. Of course. Yeah, um, it's good to be back. For the folks who don't know, uh, who are you? What do you do now and what did you do before? Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm Greg Kasavin. Uh, I work at a studio called Supergiant Games. We're um, a small independent studio just a few blocks away from here in San Francisco. And we've made two games so far called Bastion and Transistor, which thankfully have done well enough for us to still be in existence. <laughs> and prior to that, I worked here at GameSpot. Um, it was my first uh, real job, uh, and, uh, and uh, I was editor-in-chief back then, but I started as an intern and worked, worked here for, for 10, 10 years or so. And as, as part of that, I got to review a lot of really good games and occasionally some not so good games as well. And one of the really, really good games was, uh, was World of Warcraft. Massively multiplayer online role-playing games have been around for years now, but it's taken this long for the genre's breakthrough hit to finally emerge. But World of Warcraft is indeed that game. This is uh, just an incredible accomplishment and an incredibly fun game above all else. It's filled with... I, I think a lot of the like most remarkable qualities about that game were, were, were relatively subtle technical details. They were things like how it didn't take like two minutes or whatever to start playing the game. You just like double click the icon, mm. type in your password, and you're in, at least after the first month once <laughs> they got the server stuff sorted. So it was really, it was just fast. Um, and once you were in, the whole world was seamless. And that, that blew me away. Things like EverQuest, they were all like very kind of zone-based. So they were just these big maps with big long loading times in between the maps. And when the goal of an MMO is, is to kind of immerse you in the world, at least that's part of the goal, um, the difference between kind of a collection of maps with exit points and load times and, and this impression of a big seamless world is, is just a night and day difference. It like really delivered on just this kind of fully realized seamless world and also where the combat itself, which was like the core of the gameplay, was, was actually just uh, fun, fun to do both solo and in, and in groups. So before you reviewed it, you actually ended up doing an exclusive for GameSpot. Yeah, we um, GameSpot had the world exclusive, like first preview of World of Warcraft. This was years before it came out, as is has sometimes been the case for Blizzard games. So we spent the day with them, seeing seeing what they had there. They they showed the kind of seamless environment. They showed the art style and and the character design and everything, and they. You, you know, again, at, at, at that point, we, I was talking a lot with them about like EverQuest and stuff like that and what they were taking from it. Mm. Was there any um, sense back then that this was uh, going to be a game that was going to have the longevity? I think that that was totally unimaginable. To, like the level of success it achieved, they could not have possibly anticipated. I think for sure, though, the, the game immediately came across as like the most ambitious thing that Blizzard had thus far set out to do. I think, I think they were very much ambitious with it, while at the same time um, having that kind of patented uh, Blizzard uh, pragmatism. And when you reviewed it, was there any... Could you ever have thought that it was going to last the test of time um, that it has? You know, I, it, World of Warcraft is... In, in my 10 years of reviewing games at GameSpot, it's one of the... It's one of the highest ratings I ever gave out. I for sure had a sense that this is a revelatory game in its, in its genre. This is a big deal. Um, to what, what that meant exactly, you know, surely I didn't anticipate like being here talking about it 10 years later. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that level of success, uh, you know, peaked at what, like 12 million or more? EverQuest was only, which was seen as a huge hit, was something like four, less than 500,000 subscribers. As a massive hit, yeah. that was like what the <laughs> success criteria was. You know, Blizzard had launched big online games before and had gone through um, some of those woes before, like with Diablo 2 and stuff. Um, so they knew going in that there was going to be a lot of demand and they, you know, and they thought they had like, I think it was something like they thought they had like three times as much sort of capacity <laughs> as they needed and then it was, it was nope. just nowhere near enough. So they, they had to scramble for a while, but yeah. obviously, you know, people were, ended up being forgiving of, of that initial uh, rough patch. 